we're a lot more aware of, of diabetes now. So a lot more people are being checked for diabetes and therefore diagnosed with diabetes. If we look um, back maybe 20 years ago, uh, a lot of people didn't know they had diabetes until they had quite a significant health event. So they were living with diabetes for a long time, untreated until they had a significant health event. And then they were told that they had diabetes whilst in hospital. So I think our, our diagnosis is a lot better and maybe our community awareness is becoming better as well. And what are the different types of diabetes and has there been uh, some really substantial growth in, in one of the types? Yes, well, um, there are uh, several types of diabetes. The, the main type or the most common type and about 90% of, of all diagnosed diabetes is type 2 diabetes, um, which affects a broad range of the population these days. We used to just say it was old age diabetes, but now we're seeing people younger age being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Um, there is a bit of a stigma within the community that type 2 diabetes is self-inflicted. That's actually wrong and that's what we're trying to change at the moment. There is a genetic component to developing type 2 diabetes. And then we've also got type 1 diabetes, which is an autoimmune disease um, and affects, again, a wide range of the population. Mostly we see it diagnosed in children, but we can also see it diagnosed in adults. And then we also have gestational diabetes, which affects um, women who are who are pregnant um, and affects them during their pregnancy. Once the baby's delivered, normally that diabetes will resolve, but it puts those risks, those women at risk of developing type two diabetes as they get older. So unfortunate to hear there's stigma associated with any disease. Where, where does that come from and what can the community do to address that? Well, I think that comes from um, some of the, the old wives tales out there about diabetes being a sugar condition um, and a lot of people believe that if you eat a lot of sugar you're going to develop diabetes that's not actually right so the sugar we're talking about in diabetes is, is a is glucose which is the fuel that makes the body um, work we all need to have glucose in our system unfortunately with diabetes particularly type 2 diabetes our body isn't able to utilize that glucose very efficiently um, and so a lot of people think that type 2 diabetes in particular, but also it, it crosses across to the type 1s as well, that people have self-inflicted this diabetes because they have poor eating habits or they don't exercise enough, they're sedentary. Um, so we need, to, we need to dispel some of those myths. Now, the people with type 1 diabetes, there's nothing they can do about it. The body's just decided it doesn't want to produce insulin anymore. And so there's nothing that they could have done to prevent that as yet. We haven't, we haven't got a cause for it. Yeah, and uh, so how tough can it be for people with uh, diabetes now? Uh, have there been significant advances, I guess, uh, for the general population, uh, the way they come across it is seeing people doing the, the process of pricking their fingers a couple of times a day. Is, um, have there been advances to make that any more, any easier? Certainly. It's the 1st of July, um, the Australian Diabetes Educators Association is very pleased that the Albanese government has um, mandated that um, everyone with type 1 diabetes um, can access continuous glucose monitoring systems, which means they don't have to finger prick anymore. They can use a device that is able to check their glucose levels continuously 24 seven without doing finger pricks. So they're getting that real time data of what their blood glucose levels are doing. Um, and so that's been uh, just the subsidies just been rolled out as of the 1st of July. So we're all very busy trying to sign people up for that. And also to, um, to make sure that people who are using this technology understand the technology and um, are able to interpret the data because all of a sudden we're getting this data overload now because <laughs> instead of just pricking your finger three or four times a day, they're getting continuous glucose data given to them all the time. So as diabetes educators, um, we're, we're out there to help people walk through their journey with diabetes and help them with this technology and to interpret this technology. And, and what's your appeal to people without diabetes in, in terms of making life easy for people with diabetes? Look, we can all be affected with diabetes. And as our population is getting older, there's a greater instance of, uh, you know, the older you get, the greater the instance of diabetes there are. So it can affect anyone and everyone. So uh, most people, one in 20 people with diabetes in Australia, most people will know someone with diabetes. So we need to remember to teach 
treat them with care and compassion. Um, as I said, most people don't want to make themselves unwell. People don't set out to make themselves unwell. So we've got to stop the blame game. We need to uh, reduce some of the stigma and be more supportive of people with diabetes. Um, if you know someone who's got diabetes or you're at risk of developing diabetes yourself, go and seek professional health. So that could be speaking to your GP or it could be speaking to a diabetes educator, a credentialed diabetes educator who can walk with you through this journey and support you and be your coach, basically, your life coach, so you can live the best life you can. And, and uh, just before we leave you, if there are people out there who are watching who want some more information, where can they go? The best place to go to is the Australian Diabetes Educators Association website. We have um, some pathways that we've developed for people living with diabetes, and that's sort of a step-by-step -step, uh, recipe for who they need to see, when they need to see them, how often they need to see them. So they can, um, they can come to www.adea.com.au, and there's lots of information there. There's also a Find a CDE um, area where you can plug in your uh, postcode and find your closest credential diabetes educator. At least it's a nice easy web address to remember. It's not one of those crazy <laughs> long ones. Okay, Anne Bush, thanks so much for having a chat to us this morning. Lovely. Thank you for having us.